they asked Bantams about it after the game. He's like, I don't know. I got a cannon. Was he talking about so, his arm? Yeah. He was like, they were like, can you make that throw? He's like, yeah, I got a cannon. Welcome back to episode 101 of the Shy Sports Weekly Podcast. Ty Kyle, how are we doing, boys? I'm, uh, I'm, this is my, my Jordan episode, my Jordan flu episode, I should say, because I'm yeah. coming off a bit battling of a battling the elements. Yeah, I'm coming off a bit of a bender. I feel like I, is this dude's I, fucking I, sick? I think I've been drunk or nailed it. Are you actually over. sick or just hung over? No, I'm hung over. Definitely okay. not. This is, this is the. This is not a illness. Not a super spread like your wedding was. I'm like I'm I'm at the point where I'm hungover. I just saw I'm watching the baseball game. They had a uh, they had like a stack of Gatorades, and I'm just thinking, God, I could use one of those right now. (laughs) I'm at that. I know the feeling. That's what happens. That's what happens when you're pushing thirty like us, and uh, you just you just can't do what you your body can't do what it used to. No, 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 these days. No, no, I push it to the limits, and then I uh, I found where my limits are. So, <laughs> at least you know where they're at. Yeah, it was. Oh, trust me, I know where they're at. <laughs> but how's your how's your guys' weekends, Ty? I heard you had a fun Saturday. <laughs> Couple two uh, three thousand beers. Yeah, I went golfing with McGrory. Shout out McGrory, and yeah. then uh, naturally went to the bar afterwards. So you know. Where'd you golf? Uh, Cary Country Club. Out Sounds this way. fancy. It's not. It's uh. It was thirty nine dollars for eighteen with a cart. Fall good special. Deal. So it's a good enough course, especially for that price. But it's nothing special at all. I love it though because it's very hilly. What'd you shoot? Scenic. Scorecard said ninety five, but that ain't real. More like a one hundred six. <laughs> We'll go, with 10, we'll go with 101 for this episode. How do you yeah, come yeah. up with a discrepancy of 11 shots? Because I take mulligans because I'm not playing for anything. So if I have a bad shot, I'll do a mulligan. Oh, so 95 is the score then? Yeah, exactly. I count that as a 95. Max takes unlimited mulligans. We know that. <laughs> Everyone does. I mean, if you're not you playing guys, for nothing, you're going to. sounds like you guys are uh, great people to play golf with. It just oh, sounds I, like I, a great I people. Fuck. If There's I shank actually, one up, like there's there's a fine line. Like there's guys out there that are just miserable to golf with because they take the rules way too seriously. Yeah, yeah. yeah well, I don't even look for my ball half the time. If it's not yeah, on the nice. fairway, I'm grab a ball. Yeah. Um, this actually does sound like me and Ty are the best people to golf with. <laughs> what do you think about tea bag yesterday? Oh man, I think I'm a tea bagger. I watched the. I, I think we've talked about this before. Is there a quarterback watched... controversy in uh, in the Windy City? I think Matt Eberflus thinks or knows there is without knowing there is because he had to say Justin as our quarterback two or three times in the post game press conference. Which the more you say it, the less the less believable it is. Yeah, the less convinced you are that Justin's actually the quarterback. Right. So it's yeah, like an insecurity was... kind of thing. So that's kind of fun, but uh, yeah, that was that was fun. I mean, I'm not gonna lie. I, I watched the game, no sound on. When you don't watch it with the sound on, you can't tell what's going on. Like I knew he was playing well, but I didn't know like Quint. If you'd have told me he had like 230 passing yards, I would have believed you. I think he had 160. I looked up today. I don't know. He said, "You tell me." The throw, me the throw he made. How do you the throw he made in the in the two minute drill, like right before halftime when he was on the move and. Yeah, the hit. third in like seven. Yeah, to move the chains. That was like okay. When he made that play, I was like, all right, he might be good. So what you got to tell me? I was reading online that something. I saw so that play. I one that was a DJ Moore on the sideline. He threw that too. I think it might have been. Yeah. Whoever I got up and it's like signal first down. I knocked my drink all over the table, so I didn't watch the rest of the drive. But I saw <laughs> Eber, so I saw that Ibra Flus uh, fucked something up with clock management or something. Was there, what happened the rest of that drive? Cause I know they didn't get any points. And I saw Nathan Peterman came in for a Hail Mary. Yeah. And then Why? they asked Badgett, they asked about it after the game. He's like, I don't know. I got a cannon. Was he talking about so, his arm? Yeah. He was like, 
they were like, can you make that throw? He's like, yeah, I got a cannon. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, that's odd. That if oh god, this is this is how my dumb brain works. If if Bajan stays in, is it Bajan or Bajan? Right? I actually don't know. We're gonna go Bajan. Except I heard one person say Bajan. If he just stays in to make that hail mary throw and gets it to the end zone, incomplete, right? We'll say incomplete or intercept or whatever. Um, right now I'm thinking I'm like, damn, he's the guy. But the fact that they took him out for Nathan Peterman, now I'm just now I'm having second thoughts. Yeah. I don't like that. I don't I feel know, like man. they did that to protect him though. They didn't want him to get clobbered and then, you know, scrambling out of the pocket looking for a guy downfield. And I don't know, that's the way I took it. Which is disrespectful as fuck to Nathan Peterman. It could be the case, but I don't know if I buy that. Oh, you're saying it's disrespectful to the backup now. Well, because I, like I think it. they took him out for fear of injury. And they're like, here, you go do it. See what happens. And then did I also see that the very end of the game, God, I don't know why I wasn't paying enough attention, but at the very end of the game, it wasn't Bajan that took the kneel down. It was Peterman. Well, yeah, I think they were up so much. that They probably had like the backups to the backups in. Yeah, how do you? Th- how do I you don't know. I, Peterman feels that he's probably fine because he's, he's making. He's probably pushing, making a million dollars this year just to Top. go in there and throw one hail mary and kneel on the ball. So Pretty he probably feels Todd, good. Can you, find out, can you look up what? Um, who's the guy I was just talking about? Nathan Peterman. Can you look up what his set is? I'm very curious. Um, what else obviously this point one mil. Are we? Shut are up. we? Yeah, exactly. Are we at the point now where like this is this feels like a wasted season, right? Like they're two and five. What if they lost make... yesterday? Would that have been more of a wasted season or less of a wasted season? No, I think it would actually have been better for them. <laughs> oh, you think so? Like how are you thinking about their what what what's like your ideal outcome for this bear season right now? Um 12, I'm gonna... twelve and five. <sighs> I'm going to preface this where with um, my mind is not in the right state to have a full conversation right now. I was thinking today I had to go on a walk to just kind of clear my brain a little bit. A little Sunday, Monday scaries action. I was thinking if they would have just beat the Broncos, they would have been three and four and they would have been in the hunt. It's messed up. We've been, I've been saying if that for a couple weeks now. But you know, they have the best rush defense in baseball. Football and baseball. Well, baseball for sure, but football, I don't know. Mm-hmm. Um, who's that? The Broncos or the Bears? <laughs> well, the Bears. Really? The Bears? Have, no. Are allowing the least yards per carry or in yards per game in the league. No, I would not have guessed that at all. Right? Their defense over the past three games has allowed only four touchdowns. Um, I think they're averaging like only seventeen points per game, which is. I, think I saw a tight six in the league. They're, I think the, the goal for me, bad. basically, fine, keep Bajant or Bajant, however you pronounce it, on the roster. Like, he can be the backup. Um, but the goal for me now needs to be – we need to be able to determine if Fields is, like, is the guy. Like, are we are they building around Fields? Or are they potentially, like, trading him, moving him in the offseason, and then drafting a quarterback? We're, we are going to get out in front of this and say, as much as we – well. Suck off Tyson. What's Tyler Bajan? Tyson. What is his name? Tyson Bajan. You, you've been saying it right. I'm pretty positive. Tyler. Yeah. yeah Tyson. Been, Tyson Bajan. Yeah, I think I just had a seizure. Uh he's never. We're never gonna be in the camp that he's the guy, right? Like that. He is actually the guy, right? No. We can go out on record right now, hand up, and say Tyson Bajan. Simply not the guy. guy. That that game alone probably like get, made was him fun. a career. It made him that a career as a backup. Like, he just yeah. established himself. Perfect. Great guy to, you know, send memes about that his dad is a 28-time like armor. He might wind up being a guy that, like, even if he doesn't, like, if the Bears move on from him, like, some other team might give him a chance just solely based on that game. Yeah. He, you you know? he reminds me of uh, – he's like a East Coast Gardner Minshew. Yeah. I couldn't tell Can I say something as an outsider looking in from this situation? Yeah. yeah I've watched sure. a lot of Bears football this, this year just because, like, that's the local game we get. It felt like a different energy with this dude in 
the whole team for whatever reason it felt like i mean it was just a different vibe for what it's worth team. he's one and oh and fields is one and five so don't so call week. it a tom brady situation but <laughs> we're not gonna call it that don't worry don't you yeah. worry yeah, no, yeah. Confused. we might have one on our hands uh, yeah, uh, maybe probably not i I think if anything, obviously this is like a knock towards Fields, right? Like the yeah, Raiders you, don't have a good. If, if you really want to, like, you're not too good. Yeah, if you want to decipher something from this, like the Raiders' defense is not good, um, and like Bajan didn't play fantastic; he played well. But he had a ninety-seven point something passer rating. Like at the end of the day, the Bears won the game in convincing fashion, which. They haven't done much of Shocking. with Justin Fields at quarterback. So the was in the last calendar year now. So it'll be like since October twenty fourth. What did I write here? Yeah, October twenty fourth of twenty twenty two. That was when the Bears beat the Patriots to go three and four last year. They yeah. went. They then went to lose the next fifteen games. So. By the time this podcast, what's funny about dropped. that is that's why that during that stretch was when Fields was absolutely stuffing the stat sheet, right? Just couldn't win games. You know, it's also funny. So I was looking at what we posted around this time last year, and uh, on the podcast we were <laughs> we were talking about Bears cap space, like in signing DJ or trading for DJ Moore. That was something we had. Uh, but another topic we had was that the Bears are in the hunt at three and four. <laughs> and I was like, wow, my brain is just a flat circle. It's, it's the just, same. I was <laughs> thinking we're, how if we're, we were three and four this year, we would be in the hunt. Dude, Bears fandom is a Twilight Zone episode. Yeah. So I mean, to be honest, it is. So in the past calendar year, I'm looking at all the records in uh, the NFL. The Bears are tied for last with a 2-15 and 15 record in their last 17 games, which is a 118 win percentage. They're allowing 30 and a half points per game, scoring 21. The 30 and a half points per game is by is the most by yeah, I guess two points over the Colts and the Broncos. The 21 points per game is yeah, it's middle of the pack, 14th, I guess. So it's not that bad. Yeah. Like I, hate to, I hate to sound like this. We are a pro Chicago, pro Bears podcast. Oh, but, like, we've seen so much of this shit that who's to say that even if they get the, the number one and number two pick in the draft next year, that they're not just going to fuck that up, too. Like, they might even draft generational talent. They might even get Caleb Williams or Marvin Harrison. But, like, who's to say that they're not just going to ruin them? Do you think. If the Bears drafted Patrick Mahomes, he would suck. I don't think he'd be the same guy he is right now without Andy Reid. Yeah, I agree. I agree. But hey, I I have a fun fact here for you. So I don't even like to think about that universe for the sake of Patrick Mahomes, honestly. I'm gonna hit you with a a nice fun stat that I I I apologize for my negativity. I'm still scorned from spending all that money on the tickets to the Bears Vikings game. Yeah, that was that was a big doo doo head move. Mm-hmm. Big doo doo head move. The, I even bought a turnover chain. No, that's pretty sweet. That I think. Let me grab nice. it. I'll put it on. Oh yes. You know how like in hockey, after every win, they ha- they like hand out like their. Uh, I think the Hawks this year have a turnover chain. That sort of thing they give out. You have to wear that and just give it out to the MVP of the episode. You can give it to yourself too. Actually, we should do that every week. Like, who's the MVP of the episode? And we just we had like week, a 50 50 chance if you can't give it to yourself. <laughs> no, I'll, I'll actually give a uh, performance, uh, like a game ball, basically. Yeah, that's what this Yeah, this is the game ball. It's the turnover. Don't put chance. your balls anywhere near me, dude. Bajan got the actual game ball in the locker room uh, on both sides. I'll give one on each side of the ball. Jalen Johnson for his pick six. That was fun. Did he have two interceptions? Yeah. Two interceptions. Uh, Jalen Johnson on defense for sure. And then Deontay Foreman on offense. Three touchdowns. I think yeah, he, had, he was good. Did he have over 100 scrimmage yards? He was close. 120, I think I saw. Yep. Shout out your fantasy team. 
Yeah, Gal, I honestly got had no idea he was in my lineup. Not the slightest idea. <laughs> like as bad as that sounds, I just didn't. I was drunk. Yeah. Um. So, so there, there's those. There's my week. Uh, week seven MVPs. I've I've three bear stats I want to throw at you, and I want your reaction to each. So, um, but is it Deontay or Dante? Uh, I think it's or Dante. I actually don't even know. Don, I'll go Dante. So Dante Foreman, he's on a list of since 1960 of Bears with two rushing touchdowns and one receiving touchdown in the game. Matt Forte, Neil Anderson, Walter Payton, and Gail Sayers. So that's kind of cool. That right? is pretty damn cool. Yes. Uh, Elite company. I think it's I think it's Deontay. It is Deontay. Right? Deontay. I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure, yeah. Sweet. I had to look up the phonetic bullshit. So this is a cool one. Bears QBs to win their first NFL start since 1988. Tyson Bagent obviously was one yesterday. Can you name the other three? Bears QBs to win their first NFL start. No, that's going to be tough. Uh, One was in 99, one was in 03, and one was in 04. Cade McNown? Nope. Uh, Craig Eric Kramer. Oh, you you're there. Craig Krenzel. In 04. Okay. Eric Kramer so, was not. So Craig Krenzel is one of them. Yeah, Craig Krenzel. Chris Kramer. Cordell Stewart. No, he his first NFL start wasn't with the Bears. Oh, oh, you have to think I, their okay. first meant, NFL start, not their first. Gotcha. Start I thought you meant first with game the with the Bears. No, their first ever NFL start. Okay. Surprise, Cade McDonald wasn't one of them. <laughs> I'm not going to get – I mean – You're missing the 03 and the 99. I'll give you the 99, Shane Matthews. I don't think you would have gotten him. No. I didn't recognize the name, but would not have gotten that. 03, you – I know for a fact you know the name. You, We've talked about him extensively on this podcast. Maybe not extensively, but we've talked about him frequently. Jim Miller. God no, Rex Grossman. <laughs> oh, sexy, sexy Rexy. All right, and then this is, I guess I had four stats. I'm I'm buzzing in, but I'm an idiot. And since 2011, there have been 15 quarterbacks to start for the Bears. Only two have won their first start. Tyson Bajent was one yesterday. Who was the other? To win their first start as a bear. Now, this is like a veteran. This isn't a rookie, obviously. What year was this? Ooh, I don't want to get I think I would give it away. Cutler. No. Chad Hutchinson. You're no, those both Cutler was in 09. He made his first start, and Chad Hutchinson was like 04. Well, you didn't give me a year, so since 2011, I said. Oh, uh, what year was Caleb Haney? No. Nope. It's not him. I think he was 07. He started a game. <laughs> and maybe 2011 he started a game. But, yeah, no, he did not. He lost to the Raiders. Oh, man. Chase Daniel. Okay. Wasn't wasn't gonna get there, so thank you. Sorry, my brain. I was watching a replay of, of this game. I might have forgot to tell you the answer. And then finally, my final stat that this one we're all gonna really enjoy. Uh, over the last three weeks, the Bears are two and one. The Bears have won two of the last three games, which is funny to think, right? In that time, the Packers have not won a game. Over that time frame, the Bears have beat the Raiders. And the Packers have lost to the Raiders. So by transitive pop property, the Bears are better than the Raiders. Thoughts? I mean, yeah. You mean better than the Packers? What did I say? Yes. Better than you the said Packers. Better than the Raiders. You said Raiders. Well, I'm both. Both. Uh yeah. I think I I think they both suck. <laughs> <laughs> but the fact that the the fact that the Packers lost to the Broncos 
coming off a bye. Like, the Packers were coming off a bye. They had two weeks to prepare for the Broncos, and they looked absolutely – couldn't have looked flatter. Atrocious. Like, that just – it just made me so happy. I feel that bad is... for your buddy, for your buddy Brendan, because he just got married, and that's what he had to wake up to on Sunday. But well, thank you. He's one of the few Packers fans that I actually feel bad for. He, I don't feel that bad for him. Cause he, I think he thought uh, Jordan Love went to like Utah or Fresno State because he couldn't, <laughs> he couldn't figure out that Utah State was a college. <laughs> so I'm not. I'm not too worried about him. Based on your ipso facto transitive property, I agree. Yeah, I agree too. I think we're we're geniuses. Um, okay, so that was one. That was my. Uh, those are my fun facts. What do we have to do on this days now? Yeah, hit the on this days, would you? October twenty. So we did the Bears Pats one October twenty fourth. Uh, here's another Bears Pats one. This one is just near and dear to my heart. Uh, October 26, 2014, down 25 in the fourth quarter. Lamar Houston tears his ACL, celebrating a sack. Bears get head given up, and this is while the Pats are in the red zone, ready to score again. Uh, the Pats ended up putting 51 points on the Bears that game. So, yeah, he's celebrating and fucking tears his ACL. Uh, another thing I noticed on this, this post I'm looking at from last year, I replied to someone saying I tore my ACL and I spelled tour T O U R. <laughs> you had golf on the mind. Yeah, I definitely did. Tour well, last year, that, dude. That has to be the worst way to tear your ACL is down 25 on the road. I just looked up. Yeah, not not great. I just looked up Lamar Houston stats with the Bears. It's like he had eight sacks in 2015, played a full season. No. Yeah. Yep. Really? Yeah. He was, he was supposed to be pretty good, wasn't he? He was. I mean, yeah. I think he had like a bigger name than what his stats ever really were, to be honest with you. Some people, not that this has anything to do with Lamar Houston, but I saw a group of people yesterday wearing uh, a Jared Allen, like just Jared Allen jerseys. Bears or flock. Vikings? Bears. There's a flock of really? 69 Jared Allen jerseys where I was. That could be like one of two things. Either those people I are. I didn't talk to any of them. They're either related to them or they just love the number 69. I think it's going to be the latter. Or a oh, okay. combination of both. Yeah, maybe. Uh, and then the second on this day is October 30th, 2016. For the first time since 1945, the Cubs win a World Series game at Wrigley Field. I was looking some stuff up before this, preparing. The Cubs going into game five, they didn't score, or they scored only two runs. So they scored two runs in the first game, and then would that be 21 innings? So they scored two runs in 21 innings. And as or the pitch before Chris Bryant hits that home run to tie it at one, John Smoltz was saying that the Cubs need to get on the board right here. Otherwise, this could be game. Because if you remember, the Guardians or the Indians had that uh, that three-headed monster of Shaw, Allen, and Andrew Miller at the back end. I don't think people realize just how important that, like, a fourth-inning rally, literally a fourth-inning solo shot saved the season to me. Yes. Because they had Would Andrew you? Miller starting to, like, get loose, and he was going to go to. They all were going to go to. They're, they're going to shove it right down our hoops. It was not going to be fun. Where were you when a solo shot in the fourth inning saved the season? My column. All right. Good talk, Max. <laughs> <laughs> I was Thank trying to think just, about where I was. Max uh, just sat there playing with this turnover chain. Didn't give the man enough time to think. This was game seven, correct? This was game five. Yeah, game five. What was I doing? Probably had know. your pud in your hand for no, sure. No, no, I watched game five by myself because I legit thought they were that it was all going to end right there. Yeah, same. Honestly, same. I was very scared. But, yeah, that's kind of a fun fact. Uh, besides that, Ty, what do you got? You got anything else you want to talk about, Max, or you want to just go into Sporkle? Picks. Let's do picks and then sporkle. Picks. Oh, 
How kid, could I kid doesn't know the, the format of his own podcast. How could I have forgotten? How could I have forgotten? All right, let's look at picks here. Um, Max, last week you went two and two. So you're twelve and four. I went two and two. I'm seven and nine. And Ty, you went six and ten. Or you went one and three. So you're six and ten. So Ty, you're you're in last place. So you start us off. Yeah, be skippy for me, dude. I got Eagles minus six and a half against the Commanders. He was so prepared. I have them written out because I'm a gentleman, dude. We were waiting 45 minutes for you, so yeah. (laughs) And a scout. Hooper's Hawk, dude. No, no, no. It was not 45 minutes. It was probably four to five minutes. No. It's awesome. And with that, Kyle, go ahead because I'm not ready. I know. I have the Packers minus two and a half over the Vikings at home. That's one that doesn't really make sense to me. Max yeah. B, you are up. That makes no sense. So you take the side that makes zero fucking sense. Mm-hmm. That's, a, that's, that's, that's kind of a theme for me. I appreciate what you did there. Um, Maybe I think you're on my, my time here. I'll just go Ravens minus eight and a half against the Cardinals. The Ravens look like an absolute wagon against the Lions, and I'll just keep riding that. I like it. Uh, naturally, I have to go with Steelers plus two and a half against the Jags. We'll see. This one might bite me in the in the ass. Mike Mike Tomlin is what did I see? He is like fifty six, twenty nine and two against the spread as an underdog. That's outrageous. Why are we not betting the Steelers as underdogs every time? Well, pro tip, you bet the Steelers to lose the first half and then to win, and then you bet them to win the game, and it's bingo, bango, bongo. That's a pro tip? Nice. Yeah. They never How are they 4-2? It makes no sense. I have no idea. They're, they're, they're four probably two? the worst 4-2 yeah. team. They're in first the place history. in their division. The Steelers? Crazy. Mike Tom Technically, the Ravens are. Well, the junkyard. No, the Steelers are because the Steelers have they beat them. They've, they've had a they've had a buy, and the Ravens have not. Yeah, yeah. And the Ravens have five wins, and the Steelers have four. Yeah, I guess the math checks out. Max was right. No, well, here's uh, a I'm free pick: take... Texans minus three. Not my <laughs> pick, but free pick. It's so funny you say that because my underdog is Panthers plus three because it makes no sense. Yeah. Texans coming off a bye. How do you, where does that make sense? The reeling Panthers, it doesn't. So I'm taking the Panthers plus three. That's my second makes no sense bet. I think you missed the boat on the doesn't make sense bets because that those all cash this weekend, actually. Did those no, those bets are every weekend. You think that was just one that's a one weekend prophecy? Kinda, yeah. Like the public has been winning this year. You obviously um, don't know things that don't make sense. Uh, I'm 12 and four, buddy. Oh, he pulled his oh. record out. Don't play uh, yeah, it, dude. <laughs> it's fucked up. Um, it's kind you of braggadocious. You're fucked. You are fucked. Pretty braggadocious. Let's fucked. see. Let me let me find an underdog here. And this is the worst part of it, dude. He's 12 and four, and he literally doesn't have picks until in the moment, and he just picks one out of the fucking do it. clouds. Oh, Shoot from the hip. Don't think Just too much into it. Yeah. I uh, I'm gonna take the Bears plus eight and a half. I don't think the Chargers oh, are gross. I don't think the Chargers are good. I don't think the Bears are good. Frauds. Why they just hung thirty on our on the Raiders? They're back, and I'm wearing this turnover chain <laughs> for a goddamn reason. Um, I'm gonna go with Bucks and Bills over forty two and a half. And that's my story, and I'm fucking sticking to it, dude. I think the Bucs are so bad. They're pretty bad. Uh, I'm going Dolphins, Pats over 47. That's I just picked a random game. <laughs> the Giants, Jets total is 36 and a half right now. I saw Do it. the Falcons playing. I saw that was low, too. God almighty. Uh, Titans, no, maybe? I'm going to go Eagles Commanders over 43 and a half. It's fair. That's, that's, that's one that uh, I feel like that should be fair. 
I am going to go Texans Panthers under 43. Texans. That one's going to go over. Yeah. I'll, I figure I'm just going to go 0 and 4 like most weeks. No, you're going to go. You're going to go 1 and 3 with the Steelers are going to win. Uh, Broncos Seahawks <laughs> under 40. Another one I, I just really don't, I don't know. Next B. Your dog. You mean yeah. my under? Uh, dog. I'm going to go Chiefs Broncos under 46. All right. The picks are in. Let's end day. Let's go. Pick a dilly. Pick a dilly. All right, so for Sporkles, I really only have one That's that perfect. I found that, that I enjoy. It's a, oh, it's I a five minute. One quick thing up real quick. I was looking up Gardner Minshew, and I forgot to bring up. His nickname on Google says Jock Strap King. If you Google Gardner Minshew. Where did he get that nickname? No idea, but if you just Google it, uh, if you just Google Gardner Minshew on the side, it says about. It says Jock Strap King, so that's kind of – Interesting, to say the least. Uh, sorry, Ty. Keep going. I didn't mean to cut you off. I wonder if that's a Wikipedia somebody changed. No? All right, it, wasn't, anyways. it wasn't really on Wikipedia. It was on uh, just on about. So I'm not The Google I'm machine? Sure. It's like, yeah, it's on Google, and that's got to be true. Um, 103 answers. I certainly don't expect you to get all of these. Uh, five minutes. We are going... Chicago Bears yearly rushing leaders between 1920 and 2022. Let's see Jesus. if you can get back to like 1970. Ish. Okay. I don't have high hopes for this one. No? No, but we'll try it. Yeah, we'll be good. You see it? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Go. They did not, not available. available. All right, there's 12 <laughs> answers. Well, uh, all right. That's unbelievable. It's they give you 12 hilarious. answers off the dot. Neil Anderson. Gail Sayers. Anthony Thomas. Um, Red Grange. No. Uh, Sid Lockman. wonder if Lockman ever did. No. Fields. Uh, go Walter Payton, obviously. Forte, Jordan Howard, Thomas, Thomas. Jones, Cedric um, Benson. Yeah, nice way to fill those gaps there. Uh, David Montgomery. Okay, we just you got a bonus Ross in there too in nineteen seventy, dude. Nice. Ross, that's Montgomery what I was talking it. about. We knocked out all the 2000s, basically. All right. Um, Rashad, Rashad Salam. Yeah, that, was he on the Bears? S-A-L-A-A-M. Oh, wow. Uh, um, Harlan Hill. Look up Hill. No, sick. All right. That's not who is Who is pushing the rock for them in the 90s? Pushing the rock. I honestly don't know. This is I'm I'm more yeah, this, of a Cubs guy than uh I mean if you look at the yardage, they had whoever it was in two thousand had eleven hundred yards. Pretty good. What year? Two thousand. Oh damn it. Matt Sui. S U No 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 his first name's Matt. <laughs> You respond like Hideki Matsui. I think it's S U E Y, right? Yeah. Is there an H in there? S U H E Y. S U E Y. No Matsui. No chop Sui. No soup for you. Um. Ooh, this is where it gets. Yeah, this could be where the rubber meets the road for the boys. Yeah. 
97 and 2000 is the hang up, huh? There's a Can't guy named the 1933. There was a guy named his last name was Allen. I just don't remember his first name. Thankfully, I can name 1932. That's James the, Allen, 2000. Furthest back in my memory, right after the data became available. <laughs> yeah, you could hit give up. I don't know. Let's see some names here. Curtis Ennis. Yeah, like never even heard of those other guys. Oh, Bronco Nagurski. I've actually heard of. I never would have guessed them. Does it say Carl? Oh, Carl Garrett. I thought that said Carl. Rick Everett. Ciceris. Never would have guessed him, but he was a, a Russian king, apparently. Bob Margarita. He's Rick a Russian Gotti. king. His name is George are... McAfee. Sweet. There's a guy named Margarita. Wait, there Bronson Nagurski? Where is he at? Oh, he's okay. He put me in a pretzel there. I thought he was like in the in the 50s and the 30s. I was like, what the fuck? How about Bob Margarita, Beattie? dude. How about BD Feathers? <laughs> Bob Margarita might be my favorite player of all time. <laughs> you say BD Feathers? BD Feathers. Where is that? 1934. <laughs> BD <BD Feathers. laughs> Best one yet. Oh, 